What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more John Mark. And we're going back to his 1992 album, Land of Merlin. Once again, shout out to all the folks who've been following the John Mark reactions, and to Kim particularly, who reminded me um, it would be a good idea to get back to this album. She was absolutely right. Uh, I did want to also give a shout out to Kim, who sent me two massive record compilations of some really cool stuff. I don't really want to let the cat out of the bag yet, so to speak. Uh, but ultimately, in the next few weeks, I'll begin going through both of those uh, really uh, fantastic compilations. So once again, shout out to you, Kim. And yes, we return to Land of Merlin, and after going through Merlin and the Unicorn last time, we are up to the Dream of Arthur. So any tune referred to as a dream, particularly an ambient, you know, sort of down-tempo type of track, you expect it to have an ethereal or otherworldly quality, we're already dealing with a great um, character of fantasy and, you know, sort of uh, mythological literature, so I feel like both in terms of the wider context and the specifics of this title, you wouldn't be surprised if it has a really fantastical, epic quality to it. So let's see what John Mark has to say about the dream of Arthur from the 1992 album Land of Merlin.
masterpiece. <clears throat> it's interesting. I had like the first couple minutes, I was really just like um, falling deeper and deeper into the lush sonic experience. And indeed, the track overall had a sense that the dream of Ar Arthur feels very content. Maybe not in a complacent way, but in a accepting of one's role, of one's destiny, and so on. It feels like. Um, you know, maybe not in his conscious mind, if this is indeed a dream, but um, the the sense of purpose and grandeur of the tune was clear, but it was also um, pleasant and, again, sort of contented. Uh, so that's the vibe that I got. But I was really enriched or um, immersed in the, the lush uh, pads of the first couple minutes. And I was thinking it was almost like, I don't know, instrumental church music or something. It had this sort of, um, like, deep, like, devotional kind of emotion. And then the the higher flute-style melody came in for the first time, and it, like, really hit. And then when it came in later, it was the same thing, even if I was aware that it would come back again. Um, so, yeah, ultimately, a really... Uh, powerful tune that seemed to go to another level and again in the idea that maybe um, the dream could have reached a new phase or perhaps that you know at some point it's a recognition that these are visions or something like it feels like there was some transitional point uh, in the tune when the first time that came in so a really uh, top uh, track and another one that just the soundscapes he creates are really fantastic and rich so once again, shout out and RIP to John Mark. Uh, and the next time we come back will be Perilous, or we'll be up to Perilous and Mystical Journey. That feels like it probably is going to have a different sonic atmosphere overall. And I should point out, we obviously heard a couple motifs here that have showed up in previous tracks. And that, you know, in no way surprises me, given this is a concept album, one that's set out chronologically and so on. But... Um, again, one would imagine there'll be a little more tension, maybe a little more sonic um, or tonal ambiguity, or at least uh, complexity, so I'm looking forward to that. Once again, shout out to John Mark. Do let me know what you think, and I will see you next time. Peace.